Oh, hey friends! It is time to change the strings on my buddy's guitar here. This is my buddy's Martin M36. This is really a sweet guitar. I did a video on this guitar that you can see on my channel. And if you're not familiar with them, they are like a jumbo size, three-piece back. They're quite slender, considering. It's got a nice, you know, body depth, not super deep. And I've been in possession of this guitar for a couple of years now. My friend that owns this is primarily a bass player. His music career is like um, put up on the shelf at the moment, so he's happy for me to uh, have possession of it, and uh, I still do. So this guitar has an enviable backstory that I'll share with you. But uh, I really like it, and the strings are the strings are in need of being changing. We're gonna get that done. So um, let's see what we can do with this Martin M36, see what it sounds like with a new set. So I've been playing this guitar a little bit around the house, enjoying it, because um, I've been kind of wanting that, that jumbo sound more lately, a little more body to it, and uh, this delivers. I really love the tone of this guitar. I've been wanting to put new strings on it for a while. Now is the day. I've been learning the uh, Shokin Farewell. Uh, if you're watching the channel, uh, you may know that I'm, I'm really uh, pushing hard to learn new songs right now. And a Shokin Farewell is one that's on my list, and I, I pretty well learned it. I feel pretty good about it. It's not a Celtic tune, it's an American tune, but it's um, similar in, in the, the vibe of that. Um, kind of old world-ish, maybe. So this this guitar is is virtu is basically brand new. Uh, the strings are literally still the factory strings that <laughs> that came with it, and they are you can tell because they're wound in the way that they come from the factory. Uh, so my my friend bought this guitar. I don't know if it's a, a sundowning moment of his. Uh, of his musical career, but um, he had this really nice opportunity where, uh, first of all, he's he's out of he's out of uh, Pennsylvania. He's he was living in Philly, and um, he has he had a friend who live who was working at the factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, and I guess uh, someone that works at the factory can get a discount on a new build at half price. His buddy extended the offer to get him a guitar built. So, he had chosen this model because he liked it and got himself a brand new Martin M36 in, back in 2019. So this is a brand new guitar. But for him, just the timing of his musical endeavors, it was, you know, sort of closing of a chapter for him. So um, it really sat for a while. Even though he was teaching guitar lessons, he wasn't using this one as the, his primary teaching is teaching guitar, um, and he wasn't gigging, so I can't I can't even remember how it really came up uh, between us. I just was interested in the guitar that he had, and and he said, "Do you want to hang on to it for a little while? It's not getting played. Maybe it'll get played at your place." Uh, I said, "Yes." I did connect with him, and maybe connecting with him recently actually is <laughs> what really brought this guitar back out for me. I'm connected with him uh, just to say hi, and we had a nice little exchange. I actually saw him. He was like, "You still happy to have the guitar?" I said, "Sure, I, I'll hang, I'll hang on to it. It's uh, <laughs> not exactly a, a pain point for me to have this thing in my home." I do love to keep these uh, bridge pins right in order. Six, five, four, three, two, one. They're kind of nice. I mean, they're they're plastic. They have this um, like a red dot on them. I think you can see that. I don't know what the red is actually. It's like maroon or something like that dot. I'm not sure what that would be called. Maybe you know. It's a nice touch. So I got the strings off. Fretboard on this thing's really nice and dark. And the binding on the fret on the fretboard goes all the way around the bottom here. And saddles nice and snug in its slot. There's no electronics in this. And in fact, there's the, he he didn't, he didn't even put the end pin in yet. So there's no there's not even a button there. It's in the case. I love this three-piece back. I mean, it's really pretty. It's really well done. This guitar has an inch and three-quarter nut. So I am going on this guitar with some EJ16s, D'Addario EJ16s. 
They are my workhorse. And I'll, uh, I'll put an asterisk next to my preferred strings right now that I've, I've quite fallen in love with the Diderio XS's, the coded XS's. Um, that's what I'm actually gigging with, and I'm very happy with them. The EJ16's, though, are, you know, half the price, and they're a killer string, too. So I always have a supply of EJ16's around, but I am actually uh, migrating in my main guitar to the XS's. Regarding my uh, learning new songs effort, I always feel like there's a kind of a time bomb ticking in the winter and the spring for learning because once summer hits, it's just not as conducive to learning as winter is. And I have a strong intention to have a killer garden this year. Last year my garden was a wash and I have a really strong intention to uh, really produce a lot of food out of it. And I know that once spring happens, you know, a day or two a week, so my, my discretionary time is definitely going to be spent out in the garden to keep that thing singing. I have big gardens, by the way. I have um, like a 50 by 60 garden. That's the biggest garden. And then I have another like 20 by 30. And then I have a big old asparagus patch, which is about 30 asparagus plants that come uh, May 1st, really inundate this house and uh, <laughs> any of my neighbors and my family that stops by with uh, asparagus fresh out of the garden. If you have a green thumb at all and sort of uh, enjoy the idea of growing your own food, asparagus would be the first thing on my plan for anyone interested in that. You plant asparagus once and you eat it for like 15 years or more. I have eaten asparagus that was um, from a plant that had been living <laughs> for 25, no, 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 more. Almost 30 years because the, the lady, um, Eva, from Eva's Garden down in uh, South Dartmouth, she knew that she planted that asparagus when her son was born and he was, he was turning 30. <laughs> and uh, there was this big big old asparagus it was it was like twice the size of my thumb coming up out of the ground and it bent and uh, we just cracked it right out of the ground and munched on it which is asparagus is delicious fresh out of the ground my attempts to learn right now is sort of on uh, hyperdrive so I'm really into it and what I did to kind of uh, enable myself to just have uh, free range of picking up what I need um, I had loaded up my shopping cart on Stefan Grossman's website and then inevitably ended up uh, uh, buying a month of open access. So it's $35 for access to everything on the site for the month. And I, I'm just going to try that out. I actually like to purchase and own like my instructional videos. So I don't know if this will, you know, if I'll end up buying what I'm learning or not, but uh, I'm giving it a try. And so it's allowing me to taste a lot of things and go deeper into the sample videos that they provide. So far, so good. Uh, uh, I actually didn't learn a Shokin farewell from that website. I purchased it from uh, just a, an individual. I can't remember his name. Sean. Oh man. Sorry, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Sean, maybe I can put it in post-production. Um, but he teaches songs, and I purchased it. It was kind of interesting to purchase right off of someone's website direct. It felt really good. No middlemen. No nothing. Six bucks. I got an instructional video. It was a decent video. And uh, so that's where I learned it from. Uh, problem is, I, I can't find the link back. I learned it and had the link open for like two days while I learned it. <laughs> now I can't find uh, the link and how it came to me. And I can't get back to the instruction part. So when I've been trying to polish it off, I have been just watching his performance video of it. And just doing it by, by eye and ear. 
So with uh, Stefan Grossman, I'm uh, I'm loaded up in my wish list. I have a lot of songs, a lot of uh, instructions on my wish list tab. So um, I learned uh, and posted this week or last week uh, "Lament for Owen Rowe O'Neill," instruction by John Renborn. That was pretty cool. I learned that over a course of a couple days in an open G minor tuning. Oh, Jerry Reed's Jiffy Jam. That's I'm really happy about. Although the uh, instructional video that I purchased on that is actually the same video that is available on YouTube for free at the moment. So don't, don't go buying that one from Stefan Grossman's website. Um, and it wasn't very explicit of instruction, actually. I... I learned it mostly just by watching the, just gleaning what I could from his instruction, which was not very thorough, which is fine, but uh, it took me longer. I've just started to attempt Maple Leaf Rag. I mean, I am really just starting, so I'm, I'm nowhere. It's at that embarrassing point. So the Maple Leaf Rag and Ragtime is, it is a, uh, I think I've said it before, is. It's a heavy lift. Ragtime guitar is a heavy lift, man. I think that one's gonna take me a bit more time, but the same instructor, instructor, instructor as I had for um, Ragtime Oriole, David Liebman. Uh, Ragtime Oriole is the hardest song I've ever learned. Uh, maybe this one's gonna be up there too. Uh, Maple Leaf Rag Instruction by David Liebman. Uh, he's a great player, and um, it's very, very methodical. The instruction's very methodical, which I benefit from. So I think I'm about, uh, I might be 10 days into that subscription, 35 bucks. My intention is not to actually have another month. I just want to have the month, you know, digest as much as I can, and then stop the stop the subscription it just that's the way I, I want to play this one if I like anything and want to own it I'll go back and pay the 995 to own it and if you um, have have watched these before you you know that I I hold tension on these strings when I'm winding them down um, on the bass strings I I hold them up like this keep tension on it as I feed it and, and wind it in. It, it winds tighter. I'm always making sure that the string winds above the string that hits the post. So the string that's hitting the post, it always ends up toward the bottom of the post as opposed to the top. I think that's very important. <laughs> and then uh, on this side I have to flip it around, put my palm on the board, and pull up with the string just to keep that slack and wind with my right hand. And it's just a, a feeling of how much string to have. You kind of get the gist of it after a while. Um, most of the time I get it right. Uh, I only try to get it around the post a, a couple times, two times maybe. But you can do as much as you want, of course. And these are lights, D-Dario, EJ-16s. It's 12 to 50, 52, 53. Not sure. Now here's the part where you might diverge from me. Most people are going to snip these off. I wind them up and that's how I go. To some it looks messy. To me, I like it. But it's also practical because I've stabbed myself with the strings, <laughs> the snip strings before and uh, called it quits on that and that's when I started winding them. So I don't have to carry a clipper around with me, anything to snip the ends off. It's a little hazardous here with all the strings standing up straight, but I try to just feed them up straight, you know, and keep them away from my face. All right, let's tune this thing up. I always give these strings a little tug, pull out some of the excess tension. Be careful on the high strings because you could snap them if you pull too hard. So just a gentle stretch and a wiggle and I'll tune it up again. All 
All right, we're tuned up. Let's see how she sounds. this capo up here. Name that tune. have it the martin m36 with some new strings on it hope it sounds good to you thanks so much for watching i'm glad to have this thing around the house it's pretty super special it's like doesn't even have a scratch on it if it's a, if there's a scratch on it i probably put it there so what a privilege to have this thing here and uh, i'm gonna enjoy it now with some new strings you take good care we'll see you in the next one